Well, Green can call this meeting and make that board commission order this is a continuation meeting, I suppose. Um, this is our annual work session that uh, this board is concerned. Same thing we did last year. We uh, began the discussion about our budget and uh, here from our different departments. And uh, that's sort of the purpose, purpose of this. We have a, we I didn't get an agenda, we've got uh, several of those floating in the room. We're trying to stick pretty, pretty close to that. And Mr. Manager, if we could, let's either uh, stay with this or ahead of it. So my welcome was to take 10 minutes, not just three. So uh, we'll move right in. One thing, uh, if we could, Derek, I'll turn this over to you. I had asked uh, Tommy Jenkins, is our EDC director, and uh, Tom, we're glad you're here. Tom is going to be here anyway. But uh, I think everybody in the room is aware of the situation with Caterpillar and the decisions they've made uh, regarding their Franklin Control uh, plants. So I've asked uh, Tommy to give us an update. We were, a little background. We were made aware of this. I think it's about four minutes after employees found out uh, we were at that conference. And, and uh, I speak to myself, but my, my cell phone, Mr. Field's cell phone, blew up with people calling concerned about it explained to them, and, and I've said to the media before, uh, you got to be careful. Government don't need to interfere with private business, but if, if there's things we can do to assist and preserve your jobs here, we want to do that. But with that said, you have to understand this is a uh, this is a private business decision made by a private company. And uh, But if there's something we can do to try to help preserve these jobs, then we want to do that. But I place a call to Tommy. And I think within about 10 minutes, Tommy had the representatives from the Department of Commerce and the Governor's Office on the phone and began some conversations. So, Tommy, I'm uh, Derek, would you just ask Tommy to do that now or turn it over to you? For One thing I would like to do, if, if we could, do a quick item of business. Sure. Before we get started, I would like to, to add to the agenda the consideration that you should have it in front of you. Uh, the agreement for the marketing with scoreboards and monument display center for the Parker Meadows complex. This is basically the scoreboards and monument signage at Parker Meadows complex. Our recreation director, um, Mr. Seth Adams, has been working on this for quite some time. Uh, the attorney has just finished the review uh, of this contract and he feels that I like that um, it is ready to go on board approval. Uh, it does uh, fall within the budgeted amount for the signage uh, that we have allotted for this project. And it is my understanding in conversation with our recreation director, Mr. Seth Adams, that we, he consulted numerous um, sign companies as he was looking into the signage at this project. And this one was the most financially uh, feasible. So. I would request that upon that information that um, and this satisfactory review by our county attorney and our recreation director that we go ahead and, and enter into this agreement uh, with major sign display. We do have Tammy Whitaker, is that right? It is. Uh, with us from major display here today. If you have questions, okay. with, there are two documents. One is a design and signage agreement for design and uh, of signage and scoreboards for um, Parker Meadow Complex. And basically, in a nutshell, what Seth has been able to work out with uh, Major Display Inc. is for them to do the work set forth in that agreement, the design work for uh, basically everything out there at the Parker Meadows. Um, and uh, that that would be um, $2,500 for that work. Now, in addition to that, there's a second thing. There's an agreement for marketing with scoreboards and monument display center that will be installed out at the Parker Meadows complex. And uh, basically, the way this uh, document or agreement would work is major display would do all of the installation of all nine scoreboards as well as what they call an LED monument <coughs> display center, which is, I think, at the, uh, correct me if I'm wrong, at the entrance of the, of the park that would uh, 
and, and basically they're going to do that uh, at their uh, basically at their expense. Uh, the uh, what they are going to get in exchange for that is the exclusive right to uh, advertise on those signs for a period of two years. Now that having been said, the way that works is there will be a revenue sharing. Uh, arrangement between the county and major displays for those advertisers revenues. Uh, the way that will work is at least initially, uh, major display will be uh, allowed to recoup basically what those signs will cost the county to purchase, manufacture, and install up front. Okay? Once that has recouped from the advertising revenue, and at that point in time, for a period of two years, there would be a split of revenue, 70% going to major display, 30% going to major county. After that two-year period, then there would be a revenue split of 50-50. Uh, what this does, obviously, for the county is it enables the county not to have to come up uh, with the monies to purchase those and install those four doors up front, which is a substantial sum of money. Um, and down the road, it actually uh, gives Macon County uh, the potential for a revenue stream. Uh, while there's no way to know exactly how much that would be, I am advised that it is anticipated that once we start sharing revenue with major display, uh, that we could look to potentially as much as $36,000 a year being shared in, that, in those portions. Is that correct? Can um, I get that pretty well? Can it's it's can pretty close, yeah. Well, why don't you call that? Um, and I'll you for a good day. You as well? I understand the reasons. Actually, I found that from like you were on Corbin Road. Yeah, <laughs> so he said I swear to I didn't know that you were right past you. A lot, yeah, I'm sure. Wrong pickup truck, in case I did share. But, I mean, Seth has talked to me a little bit about this, and I think. Chester a lot, and uh, this seems to be his recommendation. Uh, Chester, I guess my question is, is, is this an acceptable way to, to go about this? Is this a, uh, a yeah, good way to approach this? In fact, uh, the original documents that were submitted, um, I felt like there might need to be a little tweaking done on those in order to get it in a form that would be comfortable to the county. And uh, so the documents that you have before you are actually documents that were submitted. Have anything to add or, or to clarify the agreement? Um, well, I'd like to let you know that we've been proactive on the project because I know that the time of, is of the essence. So we have committed eight meeting rights sponsors with uh, forty thousand dollars of revenue to date. We've received as of about fifteen minutes ago eighteen thousand of those dollars, and um, so we have taken the position of. We want to be a part of this project in the community, so we have ordered all the electronics for the scoreboards that will be necessary out of those funds. And we are prepared to make this thing happen and hopefully get the sports installed for you by March. That's it. In speaking with Seth, he has indicated to me that uh, indeed, as Mr. Rowland had indicated, that this was the uh, lowest responsible arrangement that he had received. And so I think you would uh, need to, to basically approve that as such and if you were inclined to approve it. Who actually owns the school? We will own the school. At the time so of installation, it transfers ownership to you. So if Tanner makes enough money and she can retire in five years, we're <laughs> no longer a company. Didn't want uh, there, there is a corporation right now by the name of Major Display Inc., which is the North Carolina Corporation. That's who you're actually doing your contract with. Now, if she should retire in five years and and the business has lots of value at that point in time, I suspect that she will sell her stock in that company to someone, and they will then become basically the people that Because there's been their income stream. Correct. Yeah. Yeah. It's an asset on our books. 
actually lots go out and something happens. And if you're, you're required to maintain the power up to it and any communication lines up to it, but from the board uh, forward, they take care of it. Do you control any of the advertising stuff? What's advertised for you on the board? Uh, no, not at this time. Coca-Cola, they come along and say, we'll give you $10,000 to put Coca-Cola on the board. That's fine. If it's fine with you, it's fine with us. However, if that agreement extends to, we'll give you $10,000 and we want an exclusive on your vendor rights, that's nothing that we would get involved in. We would bring it back to you guys and you would have to make that decision. Well, for example, we had a corporate sponsor and we haven't <coughs> saw anything like this, but we had a corporate sponsor and we money and we named the field after it. It, That would be in our rights to do that. Well, they would need to see Tammy. Because she, by the terms of this agreement, will have the exclusive rights to uh, to deal with field naming and advertising on those signs. Uh, on the signs. Yeah. On the actual sport of rights itself, I, I have given Chester a copy of the um, the brochure that we're using in the design, and I do understand your question that you have a particular field that you want to name after. I believe it's Penley. Contracting construction, perhaps. Seth has talked to me about Maybe that. Yeah. Yeah. Okay. Well, right we, now we haven't discussed any of it. For example, okay. Dean Club passed away a while back, and I've had several people meet him. Want your name on the fields out there for him? Blah blah. If we get that's not because I gave his money. It's naming the field for someone who is an exposed standing there. If we want to do that, not on your scoreboard, but just. Maybe a plaque on the correct that, that we we do not control anything other than whose name is going on the front and the back of each scoreboard. Okay. That's, but you do need to understand that each field it is contemplated by this agreement that each field will be named for someone who purchases rights to have that field named for them on the front and back of that scoreboard. Okay. That makes sense. It, it does. We have a list. I've provided a map of the eight um, committed folks who have said we would like to that position. So eight out of the nine I have committed right now have one one left, and I'm happy to review them with you. We we make a go ahead, Jim. No, go ahead. we make um, a conscious effort. We don't sell to anybody who we feel is inappropriate for a youth field. So um, we've avoided alcohol, tobacco. Um, Pornographic, so they're all well, you know. I was gonna say, I thought I'd been in that position before by a person who had a huge gun shop, and they were like, Here's a check for $15,000. I'm like, It's a youth league. And indeed, we took one step further, and any proposed advertising or sponsorship, or it can be done here, uh, has to be proven. I was going to make sure that Bill, Bill's adult novel story. At least not photographically. <laughs> you do need to understand that. You do need to understand that Tammy's company, you know, they they have looked at this project, crunched their numbers, and the way they make it work is that they have the exclusive right to arrange for the naming and sell the naming. Obviously, their numbers change if you if you come to her next week and say to her, "We've got nine fields out there. You can sell the naming rights for five of them, but we need four of them because we've got other plans for those." The numbers are not going to work the same for her that way. Uh, there, there's a big uh, a big sum of money that goes with those naming rights. And, uh, uh, it it is going to in large measure, uh, pay for the cost of your science. I'm not aware of that. Situation, the process you have to go through, I think I've been having the same 
Yeah, we, we do a lot of uh, school group work, especially in uh, like Orange County. And so we have to go through the, I think it's a BOCS, which is a board of approval prior to our permitting, and the school board has to approve that. So I'm familiar with that. We're in effect going to be able to um, approve what our, our deal is. I mean, we, we would have final say, so if we felt like the old knowledge before it, uh, before it goes up, we, we can say no. Yeah. In fact, I mean, you need to designate somebody to make that decision on behalf of the county by the county to this agreement. I would recommend that you name your county. It's a, typically it's we haven't sold into counties before. They're local municipalities, cities, or um, schools. And so the county as a whole is not something that we've had that experience with. And then a lot of times the um, like the little leagues are run by a. Uh, like a boosters club. I'm happy to establish a process with you folks because I'm sure we're going to come across it again. No, because a lot of the AAU leagues are buying the product on a retail basis outright, and so we ship directly. For instance, I got four boards going to Utah, but they're paid for. By, they've either sold the advertising themselves and they just cut us a check in full, or they're they're self-funded. They're not going through an advertising program. What would the school boards cost installed if we just follow that? The boards themselves, the way we've got them spec currently, they're a uh, five by ten board. They're all aluminum construction, LED, and they're controlled by an Android app. They're about fifty six hundred dollars retail. Then you have the expense of the steel for the installation and all of the installation contracting. So we've got foundings, footings, foundations, etc. So in a nutshell, somewhere between nine and ten thousand is your retail value per board. Nine. Ninety thousand. Yeah. Long-winded uh, answer, sorry. You do need to understand there's also the LED monument display, which is apparently a much more complicated piece of equipment. There's a couple of things that appeal to me about this. One is not having to spend ninety thousand dollars on the board. Right. And then two, you give uh, some of your folks will give you the ability to, to support the project. Yeah, I, I was going to say not only that, but uh, major display indicates to me that they're gonna be looking to work with local vendors on some of their We'll be outsourcing some of the manufacturing and the graphics here locally in town. So we've established relationships with a sign, sign vendor because we don't do our printing in-house. Okay. Um, we buy all our electronics you're, here locally. Correct me if I'm wrong, Penny. The monument display, you're, you're guessing, is going to be in the 40000 40, So between the two of them, it, it would have been an outlay you know, in the vicinity. So at the end of the day, we will mail a field Chester Jones Memorial Field. You need to t tell that I person know. to go talk to him. You didn't have to go to you. Yes. Correct. And why did you say no? I, first, I'm going to look at the availability of naming rights, and currently we have eight commitments and one available. Um, I would look to the board to say, are you okay? That was done without our knowledge. That was already done without our knowledge. Yeah, I, I think Seth, in the interest of trying to save the county some money, went ahead and started working with Tammy and her company to try to get things moving in the hopes of uh, there being some uh, being some signs out there. So to answer you, do we have to do we have to approve the final approval? Yes, you do. And I have a list of the commitments as they stand today. So if you want to review them, I'm happy to walk through them with you. Okay. But to answer your question. For the first thing we look at is availability of the space. Secondly is board approval. And so if those two things are feasible, then we would go ahead and, and offer that to the, to the client. Tammy, is this on an annual basis? Well, because it's a 10-year contract, the naming rights are set up with um, a 10-year commitment for $5,000. 
what that gets the, the customer is their name on the front and the back of that field's board. And then we've included a 4x8 advertising panel which will hang on the backstop of that field as well. And one year of advertising on the LED entrance monument. If they want to extend the two-year 4x8 ad, it's $1,000 a year, bringing that total contract to $13,000 over the 10-year period, a portion of which $5, just for 10 years. is for 10 years with the name, and then the advertising has a two-year program to it. I've included that in the package, too. No, after, after they recoup their cost, <coughs> basically the the cost that is put in the cost of county for the purpose of information. So what does it still recoup from the naming rights as well as advertising? And I think y'all are projecting that to be two to three years. Is that right? There should be revenue share on the beginning of year three, which is when we'll start selling the ads that are on the lower portion of the scoreboard, renewable. That value is $3,000 a year times nine fields. And then we have um, the four bytes on the backstop, nine of those at $1,500 a piece. So we estimate that the gross advertising sales on year three will be about $36,000. We will split that on a 70-30 basis for the first five years. And then the balance of the contract is 50-50. And that should be it should consistently generate about $36,000 a year after year two. Tammy, I misunderstood yes, what you just said, but uh, I hit up. I think you had it reversed per our last contract. Did I you think, find it in here? <laughs> yeah, the, the way um, this reads presently, and, and this may be something that needs to be correct, right. uh, it, it indicates that uh, after you recoup your expense, then for a two-year period thereafter, we would share revenue on a 70-30 basis. And then for the balance of the contract, it would be on a 50-50 basis. Is that correct? I, what we, and Seth, can you confirm it? The, the five years after was at a 70-30, and the balance of the 10 years was at the 50-50. That was our original agreement, correct? I, I thought the last five years was a 50-50 from year after you recoup your money up until year five, it was a 70 30. Well, I'll tell you what, we're making county residents, so if that makes you all happy and we can move forward, we'll go with that. All right. How's that? Good, thank you. You're welcome. <laughs> now, now, the way it is drawn right now, we're not necessarily tied to year three or four or whatnot. What we're saying is if it takes you one year, to recoup Correct. all of your expense, then for a two-year period after that, it would be a 70-30 split, and then thereafter it would be a 50-50. That is correct. So okay. if we achieve our threshold by May of this year, our revenue share will start in January of 2016. And on the other hand, it takes five years to do it. So we'll all be waiting for our money. <laughs> exactly. Okay. Yeah. All right. As long as we're good on that. In, on our end, yes, because we have to fund the manufacturing of the product. So your signage would be the scoreboard, and then some signage on the backstop. Correct. Mm -hmm. For the first two years, and then what we'll do is we'll approach the person who has the naming rights for ten years, and I'll give you an example: Macon Bank has committed to a naming rights in the field, for a field. They want to keep the 4x8 ad behind the backstop for the entire 10 years. So they've committed in a long-term contract to a $12,000 ad agreement. Had they have not done that after two years, we would go out and sell that 4x8 advertising to another advertiser if they did not want to renew that portion. That but, sense? but they do get to keep that. The but the remaining scoreboard remains. naming for the full team. The, the field Correct. is named for ten field years. For ten years. 
I think you theoretically could go out to anybody who wants to advertise. Again, it's the function of the ad needs to come or the request for an ad comes from somebody in business or otherwise to Tammy. If she thinks it's appropriate and she wants to sell, then at that point in time she would communicate with the county to see if the county approves that. The county would need to first approve that. Currently, everybody is. Occasionally, um, for instance, in other communities, Chick fil A is a big supporter of athletics, youth athletics in particular. So, a local store would, would buy that ad, Chick fil A of Clayton. Um, so, you know, or a sporting goods company may approach us. Uh, the big Pepsi, Coca Cola's, we do work with them also. But currently, everybody is a small local business in Macon County, and if you'd like to keep it that way, we will focus our advertising on that community first before we reach out to anybody outside of the county. Is the Rec Commission okay with the issue? Yes. Rec Board. I would say if there's a greater demand for advertising than what we contemplate right now, I suspect the county would probably get to the county and make it display and they could present some additional options for advertising. Yes, absolutely. That's correct. I've been approached by the Rotary of Franklin and I consider them a, a nonprofit foundation. If it's an individual, we, as long as you approve it, I'm okay with that. And you don't actually have a tax release until you've got your investment. Typically, that is our process. We get our investment first. When we've met that threshold of cost, we go into production and installation. Because we literally live and manufacture here in town, we are, I've kind of put the cart before the house, I want, or the horse. I want to make sure that you have the boards for the grand opening, the spring market. But that is typically our policy. That's that is how it reads in the language. Yes, but the date is not in here as a point of No later than June 15th is what we've compromised on. You might read the names of the people you've got. Just I didn't know that. that. <coughs> I, I hadn't heard it. I haven't heard it. I haved heard it. I saved one for you. I saved one for you. Okay. <laughs> <laughs> Um, 
whenever we were in the, in the process of, of getting numbers for the whole park together a while ago, uh, I looked at purchasing the scoreboards outright from a scoreboard company, um, and they're about seven thousand apiece just for a basic scoreboard. Um, then I, I approached Coca-Cola. I met with them a couple times. Um, they're willing to put some money to it. They wouldn't ever guarantee how much, uh, how many scoreboards they would do. Um, and uh, one of the things that they would require would be for us to go exclusive with Coke. Um, and it's hard for us to do that if we're going to sub the, the concession stands out telling people, you know, from right away, listen, you have to, you have to use Coke to be able to do that. Then I met Tammy, who kind of does the same thing, just on the advertising. Uh, and she she gave me the uh, the pitch that basically she just has with y'all. And, and in my opinion, it, it'll benefit everything. It number one, it, it gets us the scoreboards uh, without the upfront money from us, um, and they're nicer than the ones that we would be able to afford if we just put up basic scoreboards like that at the Red Park now. Uh, and they uh, uh, they ran wirelessly. Uh, they have a a, a bigger upside to them than, than the other ones, but on the other side, you know, um, we won't have to now sell banners and stuff that hang on the outfield fence. Not, not that there's anything wrong with that, but there's a way to do it where it'll look cleaner, more professional, uh, and, and keep the park looking the way we want it to look. Uh, and, and she, in, in the other side of her her contract, is uh, going to help tie all the signs together uh, where everything out there kind of kind of looks the same. So. It, it's my opinion that this is this is a good deal. That's why you uh, have contracts in in front of you now. Uh, there are definitely other avenues, but I but I feel this is the best one. Let's say for instance, soccer. Mm -hmm. We had a, a large dome in the soccer field. They want to put They want to put They want the soccer field for a large dome. Is that within our scope? I came and had to be there. We I, need to work it out with Tammy for the first 10 years. We can speak to the balance of that. But the reality of it is, is, uh, is I think we need to have a whole conversation. With the, well, the naming rights would be bought for 10 years on that field anyway. And after 10 years, this contract is null and void. That we can either go into another one with her at that time or exit or that one off. They just want to be it. They, they can keep that same one forever. Yes. That's your decision after that time you're doing it. That, that's totally up to us. Okay. So that, that's not a problem. That'll be up to y'all to decide who, <coughs> who gets it. We, we can do that, you know, or if, if they're willing to do that. Yeah, absolutely. We can upgrade the existing scoreboards out there with the they same control system. Yeah, absolutely. They do. Yeah, they do. It is. It is. I, I was amazed at how how kind of quick they went. You know, everybody that we talked to, uh, and that, that's one of the reasons why we kind of got the ball rolling. Is we had such a time crunch on her to build the things and get them up by uh, by the midsummer when we were hoping to open. So. So we kind of went ahead, but, but y'all do have the final say in, in who we actually put out there and who we don't. Please show how many motions we approve the agreement for the service items and full board. Start from the other conversation described in the document for many. Second. 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 Uh, did you mean all that? I meant that. Did you say all that? We have a motion to second to what Chester said. Any discussion? What is your phone number, Tammy? My phone number, 850 8560. 850? Yes, sir. Is that one to somebody here? 657 4052. Yep, that's my direct number. And then I can give you a card with our 800 number. It's on there, so. There you go. Any other discussion? Okay, lots of good discussion, good questions, gentlemen. I hear no other discussion. All in favor of the motion signify by saying aye. Aye. Opposed? That motion passes. Tammy, thank you. Thank you, Jim. Thank you for the hard work.